Ah, did it stop? Okay, sorry about that. Should be good to go. I must have hit the wrong button. So Looks good. let me know if you can see it. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Scott. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the office hours. Today's February 24th. I will be your host, Jamie Hodge here. Usually I've got Steve Gomez as my co-pilot, but uh, Mr. Steve is out recovering, uh, getting a knee replacement today. And Andy just happens to have a very nasty co cold. Don't worry. He does not have the coronavirus. Everything's all good. And hopefully we'll be back firing on all cylinders uh, next week. But today you just get a little old me. Um, so without further ado, let's get the legal mumbo jumbo over with. Of course, we're all big boys and girls here ladies and gentlemen. So just keep in mind that whether it's this webinar or any of the other ones that we have coming at you each and every week, we're sharing this information with you for educational purposes only. Um, if you do need investment advice, please seek out a registered investment advisor or someone like a registered Series 7 stockbroker that can legally dispense investment advice to you. I think that'll cover it. Okay, so before we get going here, especially, and I, I do like to see uh, a large number of people in here who uh, are not TI subscribers, and we always like to take a little bit of time at the top of the hour here to let you know it's not just the award-winning technology uh, that we have here, but it's the community and the support that we fostered around uh, that product. And if you take note up here in the upper left-hand corner, and finally, I have taken the plunge and got my little drawing tool, um, active here. Uh, Barry's Trading Room, all right, one of the cornerstones of our support and resources, um, hosted by Mr. Barry Anderson. Each and every day, Barry opens up the room 30 minutes before the open. Um, he does a fantastic job. I don't know how he, he's got so much patience and he's such a good trader. Um, and he showcases the way that he uses the TI technology uh, in the room and loves to answer questions about trade ideas as well. Um, so each and every day, who knows, you might have three, four, five hundred people in there each and every day. Um, if you have taken the time to kind of shop around for trading rooms on the web, you know, you have to sort through quite a few rooms. Some of them are good. Some are not so good. One thing they all have in common, though, typically is that there's a price tag associated with them. and They're typically not cheap. Now, the added benefit of our trading room is the zero dollar and zero cents cost. It is free and you don't even have to be a TI subscriber to get in there and explore the environment. So if you have not been taking advantage of the trading room hosted by Barry, get in there and do yourself a favor. Okay, so moving right along here, of course, let's see here, there we go. Um, office hours, you get myself and typically Steve Gomez on Mondays for the 5 p.m. Eastern webinar. Steve is going to take the helm typically, but not tomorrow um, for the trade of the week right here. Uh, then on Wednesday, we like to change it up and you get the Q&A demo with the founder and CEO of Trade Ideas, Dan Merkin, along with our chief technical officer, Brad Williams, typically giving you a peek at new features that might be coming down the development pipeline, but it's always entertaining with those two. Andy is going to round out the 5 p.m. Eastern webinars with the Trading Studio, and I typically ride shotgun with him. And then on Friday, we like to change it up a little bit. We have our daily support, or excuse me, our Friday support session, all right? So we've kind of changed things up a little bit, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. The Friday support session uh, used to start off at 11 a.m. Eastern, but now it's going to start off at 12 p.m. Eastern, just pushing it back an hour. It's a come one, come all, anything TI related. Typically, you're going to have myself, Steve, Andy, and Sean all in there. Um, so whether it's is you know something as simple as a configuration issue or back testing or AI, um, no topic is off limits on the Friday support session. Now, in addition to that, we used to have the TI University uh, Monday through Thursday. Uh, educational webinars where the content was predefined and every day it would be a different educator, either myself, Steve, or Sean or Andy in there uh, as the MC of that session. And we had pretty much all the content laid out and we could answer your questions in real time, but we've changed that all up. And as you can see here, going to be starting these Monday through Thursday, including Friday now. So these run Monday through Friday starting off at 12 p.m. Eastern, 
and we're going to be hosting these on YouTube. All right. So with the address down here, if you just bookmark this address down here, tradeideas.com live, go to it, bookmark it. That's where you'll go each and every day, and we'll kick off that live one-hour session, probably allocate a little bit more time for the Friday session. Uh, but instead of having predetermined content, we're not going to go that route anymore. We've archived all of the TI universities on our YouTube channel, and that content remains static. So it's still a great resource to go and listen to 101 to get the basics, go on to 201, 301, and 401. But those will now live on our YouTube channel, and they'll be there anytime you want to watch them. You can go back and watch that content as much as you would like. So just keep that in mind moving forward, Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. Eastern start time, and we look forward to seeing you in there. Okie dokie, moving right along here. Of course, we always like to show people how our user base has expanded since we introduced the AI. AI first came online back in January, actually the very end of 2015, but we'll just call it uh, January 2016. Uh, user accounts have been on the rise ever since, and we expect that to continue, as well as our Brokerage Plus module. Once we brought that thing online, which by the way, that is the add-on that allows you to use our Brokerage Plus interface uh, to do all your trading through Interactive Brokers. Uh, currently, Interactive Brokers is the only BD where you can use Brokerage Plus. However, we've got some irons in the fire, and everybody knows that uh, the zero commission game is afoot. It's been that way for a few months now. Everybody's going to zero commissions. So we currently have a few irons in the fire. Hopefully, you know, we're approaching the end of the first quarter. Maybe it gets done before the end of Q1, but hopefully no longer than the end of Q2, where we will have a new connection to a zero dollar broker dealer, whether that be Ameritrade or E-Trade that has recently been acquired, or maybe it's Schwab, we just don't know yet, but hopefully keep our fingers crossed and we will have a connection where you can use Brokerage Plus at a $0 broker dealer. And boy, that's sure gonna open up a whole lot of trading styles that, you know, if you have to pay commission, uh, those are cost prohibitive. So we're all kind of chomping at the bit here for that $0 broker dealer connection. Um, but we'll just have to see which broker dealer has the honor of that first brokerage plus connection in a zero commission environment but it will be exciting and when that time comes we'll have a bunch of new content and a bunch of new opportunity uh, at our fingertips so exciting times on that front and here we are at today's content of course steve and andy are much more uh, well, let's just say I don't have near the technical expertise as they do, but today we don't really have to have a whole lot of expertise to think about what might happen for tomorrow. Hey, what's up, Mike C? Good to see you as always. Um, so if we're taking a look at the daily here, obviously we had the close here on Friday. What did we close at? Right around 333.48, somewhere in this little red bar here. And then we had a nice juicy gap down. I'm pretty sure this is a bad tick coinciding with what we see right here. Um, we never really got back up to that level. Um, in any case, a substantial gap down today. And then we can see market gave a little push from the lows down here. This candle opened at 323.21, which is just off the low. Okay. Or excuse me. Um, let's see here. 323.21, eh, so I'll just kind of eyeball it here. Right about here, took a little shimmy down, and then we had a little gasp here, a little dead cat type action before, you know, uh, the rest of the day played out, and it was just kind of a seesaw back and forth. Um, so we did get a little bit of a lift in the first 45 minutes, but it didn't last long. Um, so what could we expect for tomorrow? Well, you know, charts are typically a self-fulfilling prophecy, and when we look to the left over here on the daily, what is the apparent area of potential support, okay? And they always like to push it a little bit further than what we think. Um, that's the nature of the beast here. So you can see the lines that I've drawn up right here. 
kind of coalescing with these days back here. You know, it'd be nice. We kind of got close to this wick right here on the 31st of January, but notice how it just kind of perfectly opened and bounced, and we still have a little bit of space to fill down here, okay? Not the most resounding bounce that we had, you know, pretty much uh, closing very close. You know, we're actually a little bit below uh, than the opening tick this morning. So, you know, not just racing to buy the dip today. Um, if you just jumped in and bought a lot of things today, you probably were sorely disappointed, of course. Um, you know, on a day like today, it's best to be very cautious and see what plays out. Um, because I wouldn't be surprised at all to see a dip down to these levels, down to the, you know, the 320-ish area uh, before we even attempt to put a bounce in. Um, so we're just going to have to see what happens tomorrow. You know, if we kind of quickly cycle through all the other major tracking ETFs, check out the queue. It's got a little bit more space down here uh, than what we saw on the SPY. A little bit of space here. Queue's kind of, you know, uh, showing us the uh, the abandoned candle here with a little bit more uh, down here. But we're lining up here. But as I said earlier, whatever we think the area of support might be, I think we always like to push it just a little bit further. So we'll see what plays out for tomorrow. Diamonds or the Dow, you know, kind of kind of meshing with this area back here. But once again, a little bit of space, a little bit of air left there. If I go ahead and put another line there. So it really doesn't matter which one we look at. Of course, IWM uh, going to be showing us the same thing. This area that could be support right here, we still got a little bit of space there. Um, so, you know, it doesn't really matter at this point in time. Everybody's got a little bit more space there. So <clears throat> depending on what the futures do tonight, um, you know, wouldn't be surprised to see those levels approached tomorrow. Of course, tomorrow's Tuesday. You might have heard of Turnaround Tuesday. A lot of the times the market likes to make its bounce on, on Tuesday. So will tomorrow be a Turnaround Tuesday? Well, we all got front row seats. Um, so having said that, on to the business that we have left today. And of course, why is the market doing this? Because before the corona virus started inching its way into the mainstream media, and at first it was just a little bit, then it was a little bit more. Now as more and more countries get infected and start reporting cases, you know, the 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 fear, uncertainty, and doubt starts to take effect. And that's exactly what you're seeing here, ladies and gentlemen, because before the coronavirus started making its way into the headlines, you know, when we were up here setting new highs, there was really no bearish case to be made. People were starting to say the market feels heavy, feels toppy, but that was right when the corona uh, topic was just kind of inchworming its way in. Now it's really out there, and that, you know, pretty much is the kind of the, the black swan that's throwing the monkey wrench into the markets right now. Now, of course, <clears throat> how bad is it really? Is it really as bad as they're telling us? Unknown at this point unknown. We're just going to have to wait it out and see, but we'll all find out pretty soon, nonetheless. Uh, so in any case, as far as the technical perspective goes, got a little bit more room to fill here, and I certainly wouldn't be surprised to see us go test those levels tomorrow. I could be wrong, but that's just my two cents. All righty. Saw a question here. Let me just exchange. Ever correct those bad prints? Yeah, Randy, sometimes they do. Um, I think this was relative to our data feed today, um, but obviously these two ticks are bad ticks here. Something happened somewhere, somebody's data network went down. That is how bad ticks manifest themselves. Okay, so onward through the fog here. Um, let's talk about real quick here my compare count windows because as pointed out earlier, we did have a little dead cat bounce action in the first 45 minutes today, and my compare count readings were bullish <clears throat> to the tune of 57%, but, okay, considering market conditions and the external factors, you know, once again, I don't like to keep talking about the corona thing, but it is what is causing this market turbulence right now, mainly because if it is as bad as they say it is over in China, <clears throat> trade deals, all that stuff, 
it gets into other countries, you get supply chain problems, things of that nature, which is bad for companies, all right? You know, China and our economies are very intertwined, and if China starts having problems and products can't ship, you know, then you have problems, then the lines of companies are affected, so forth and so on. Um, so, big cap movers, this is the compare account window that I like to take a peek at after the first 15 minutes of the market today, which, what is this thing looking at? This compare account window is simply looking at any stock with a market cap in excess of $4 billion, which in my opinion is considered the larger caps, anything below $4 billion, uh, I consider the mid and lowers. Um, but the bottom line is, I use this, those stocks hitting highs and lows in the opening 15 minutes, you're doing some hefty one minute volume on top of it um, to try to give me a little idea of what the market might be up to uh, for the rest of the day. So after the first 15 minutes today, which would have been the end of this candle, you know, you got to give you got to give it a little time to establish an accurate count here. And in a quote unquote normal market conditions where we don't have any of these black swan type events uh, to worry about, it can give us a little peek into what the institutions might be up to for the day, therefore giving us giving us an idea of which direction the market might be uh, uh, inclined to go. Uh, but of course, you can see here after the first 15 minutes, you know, we got just a little bit of push to the upside before we capitulated and came back down and eventually popped new lows about an hour and a half into, uh, about two and a half hours actually into the session there. Um, so when you have markets like this, these windows, even though we did have a decent bullish count, you know, you have to take into consideration what's going on, what's causing the markets to do this. So I didn't really put a whole lot of credence uh, in those compare counts today. All right, so do a little time check here. All right, we're right on schedule. Now we're going to talk about Holly and the AI, simply because in these types of in this type of market condition. I can honestly say this, very pleased with the way the AI handled itself today and the results that were posted. On, we had, let's see here, 11, 17 trades total. Oops, excuse me, excuse me, 15, I guess six is 15, yeah, 17 trades between the three modules. Holly AI or Holly 1.0 kicking out nine trades. And let me just get my little draw tool back up here so everybody can see. Nine trades from Holly 1.0, six from 2.0 and only two uh, from NEO. Uh, and we did have a short bias today in the trade count. Uh, if we go ahead and sort by long or short here, oops, got to remember I got to put my pointer back on there. Out of those 17 trades, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those were short plays. And in a market condition like this, that's typically what we want to see uh, in the AI. Of course, having said that, it's interesting to see that some of the bigger gainers today uh, from a numerical or a, from a dollar standpoint were long plays. And then we did have a substantial percentage gainer here uh, that was a short in NNVC. And we did have a duplicate signal in NNVC today, which we see these from time to time. Um, each module kicking out the same exact signal. Notice that the entry time was exactly the same because both modules had the same strategy present. Now, sometimes we will see this. Um, we'll see a different module signal uh, the same uh, symbol, but at different times. Uh, so there's two different ways that can happen, either duplicate times and you know, basically just a duplicate nonetheless. Uh, but then we also can see different modules sending buy and sell orders for the same symbol at different times, and sometimes both of those trades can be profitable. But this one was just a good old fashioned duplicate uh, from different modules containing the same strategy. Ah, uh, Randy, thanks, yeah. So we're seeing that uh, bad tick in different data sources. That's good, that let us, lets us know that it's not just ours. Um, so with the AI trades, typically what we like to do um, whether it's this webinar or Andy's or anybody else's, is kind of talk about how we can capture some spread between conservative profit mode, which is this column right here, which TVTY yielded $92.82 in conservative mode, 
for the AI, but in moderate profit mode, if we took a little bit more risk, we could have made almost double. Now, before we go on, just a uh, quick note on how to make sense of the dollar values that I'm seeing here. What I'm doing is I have my AI set to risk $100 per trade, as we can see right here. I just clicked on tools, options, then I clicked on AI trade size, and we can see I've got mine based on a stop loss. Basically saying, don't care what, tr what trade it is, I wanna risk 100 bucks, and then it will size me up in shares according to that stop loss, okay? So, let's get rid of those lines over there. Let's take a look at the TVTY trade. So right here, blue arrow, 1225, this is where Holly entered the trade. That's where the signal came out. And this one took a little bit of time here. You can see right here, we had to sit a little bit of a wiggle. Uh, as soon as we get into the trade, the next candle, we kind of vacillate down here, but we get nowhere near the stop loss area down here. We're actually about halfway, but you know, not anywhere uh, close to triggering. Um, then the thing catches in the following 15 minute bar and we get a nice little uptrend here. So for about 30 minutes after the signal, we're just ebbing and flowing right around the entry line, which is common. Sometimes they get up and boogie immediately, which is always nice. A lot of the times they'll take their time and pass back and forth through the entry line uh, for quite a while here. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because a lot of the times we're busy and a lot of the times if they go immediately, we look at it, we see the price that the AI marks, 1225, but by the time we pull it up, it's already at 1240 and we're like, ah, I don't want to take a 15 cents worse price than the AI. So when they go sideways like this for a little bit, guess what? And that next candle after the entry candle, uh, let's see, the low right there on that candle is about 1208. So if we pull it up and we see, hey, I can get a better price than the AI. Holly's in it at 1225. Here it is down here at 1208. Maybe you don't want to take a stab at it right here because while well, this candle's playing out, <clears throat> we don't know necessarily that it's going to wick back up. But when you see a candle like this, the short answer is sellers took it down. They couldn't keep it down. Most of the activity was done up here in the, in the candle of the body. That's a good signal. <clears throat> if we're already long and we see a wick, that is a good thing. It tells us that the sellers could not keep control. So whether we took a chance here and went, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and suck it up at a better price, or we waited for this wick to be put in, and then that gave us additional confidence to go with the AI right about the same price, that's all good, okay? But here you did have a chance to get a better price than the AI, and that's a good thing. But needless to say, a nice little uptrend soon after this area right here, and the shaded area right here coincides with Holly's time spent in the trade, in conservative profit mode, and we can see over here, why did she get out? Timed exit, all right? And all of these strategies down here, this was the five-day bounce, and we can see right here, the five-day bounce is geared for a 90-minute hold time. So the AI simply did what it was programmed to do, and it canceled out, or excuse me, exited the trade right here, uh, because that's what she's programmed to do, and booked her $92.82. So. When we see Holly exiting a trade, if we're in the trade, we can make the decision to take her conservative exit exit with her. But if we like what's going on with the chart, we can accept more risk if we think that there's a little bit more juice or a little bit more upside in this case left on the trade. And in this case, there certainly was. If we held into the close, we'd be up $210. Thus the spread between 92.82 and 210, we could have simply said, you know what? This thing's looking good, all right? I'm gonna hold it, I'm gonna ignore the AI's exit. I'm going to hold this thing as long as I can, hopefully into the close. And this one was not that difficult to do because we went sideways for a little bit more. And then as you can see from the arrow right here, what do we do? We had a nice little over an hour of consolidation right up here, pecking at highs. And then we got a good old fashioned range break emerged on top of it in this candle right here, which would have given us additional confidence to hold the trade, or even better yet, tack on some additional shares to that winning trade, which, you know, whether you're 
in the chair for a long time or just starting out trading, you might have heard that you need to add to your winners. Easier said than done. It's not so easy to figure out when to add to your winners, but if we've already got something good cooking from Holly, which brings us statistical viability on the entry, and the thing is remaining strong, and we see an auxiliary pattern play out on top, which that's what this is, we had AI probability from Holly, or statistical probability, we get a nice uptrend, we get a little consolidation area, and then we get a opening range break, so to speak, out of this clear consolidation area right here. Now, let's also focus on TBTY's volume and how it finished on the day. Relative volume was high in this stock all day, and it finished doing almost 4.5 times the normal amount of volume. So that's always a good attribute to have on top of a winning trade or when we're thinking about adding to a trade here. So whether you just decided to hold with Holly and enjoy the remainder of the run, or whether you chose to tack on some additional shares here, we go sideways for a while and then we get that uptrend. Of course, this is all happening in the backdrop of a sea of red, okay? So when a stock is strong, going counter to the market, that's also something to pay attention to here, and TBTY is one of those stocks. And towards the end of the session here, I've also got a cool little way to filter through stocks that were strong for today because if they were strong today and they were positive on the day then those are certainly stocks that you might want to keep an eye on uh, for tomorrow's session too so i've got a quick and easy way to uh, devise those watch lists or that that type of watch list which we'll get to at the uh, end of the session here okay so all in all a decent trade in tvty and then a nice spread between conservative profit and moderate profit once again the idea is to see when the ai is exiting if it looks good on the chart and we think there's a little bit more juice in it then we can attempt to extract some of this spread all right real quick here since i'm the only guy here let me just look at this question and see if i can address it now or it might be better to save it for the end That's right, Nathan. Um, you can add EMAs to the charts, but we do not have any EMA filters right now. No exponential moving averages, only simple moving averages in the filter set. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another one that had a decent spread here between uh, conservative and moderate profit here. Um, on this one, a little bit different as it was not a timed exit, it was a profit save. Holly getting into the trade at 9.23, my time, which is Central Standard Time, holding it for a pretty good period of time here, not exiting until 1.07, about just shy of two hours before the market. Um, but once again, the shaded area coinciding with Holly's exit. So keep in mind, there was a lot more left in this trade up here. So max pro, oops. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm just not used to my little drawing tool here. I was like, why are those lines still there? Okay, AVDL, let's take a look at this one. So max profit up here, Holly's exit signal down here, okay? Now, a couple things to point out about this trade. Uh, number one, it would have been a little hard for me personally to, uh, to ignore what happens up here. So we get in right here, right at the $10 mark flat, Tops out at 1076, not a bad percentage gain. Anytime I'm getting up that amount, especially in these market conditions, uh, I'm gonna think about peeling a little bit off. Now, a little bit can differ from person to person, um, but keep an eye on the green line here. This is the 10 period SMA, what we also to refer to as the fast line. Um, a lot of the times when a stock is in play, this is gonna be the guiding hand. So we can see here, we start topping out up here. We try to close below that 10 period. We wick back up, but then right here, as soon as this bar closes below that 10 period, we take a little regression down. Unfortunately, this is where Holly closes the trade out right here in a profit save mode, okay? In other words, it's backing off. It's starting to go the other way. So she is able to get out of it in profit save mode. And just to kind of rehash here, 
there are five reasons why the AI will get out of a trade. Profit target or stop loss was hit, the timed hold expires, and then she has the option to close a trade out early in profit save or reduce risk mode. All right, so <clears throat> in my opinion, a little bit late on the exit right here, because as soon as this thing gets weak on the 10 period, I'd be more inclined to close it manually uh, from that perspective. But a little dip, 10 period gets reclaimed right here, and then we do finish higher into the close, but this one not quite as easy to play or stick to as the TVTY that we had over here. Notice how it hugged that 10 period like a glove, a couple of wicks below it, but never any, any bars closing below it. So keep that in mind, especially if you're on the intraday timeframes, predominantly the 15 minute is what the 10 period is, is, is reacts the best to. You'll notice a lot of correlations even on the five, uh, but 15 minute is definitely my favorite when monitoring the 10 period there. So a decent spread, once again, between conservative and moderate profit. And the cool thing is, is these were both long trades today. All right, one quick moment here while I catch up on questions. Yeah, and I'll get to that at the end there, Nathan. Regarding, that's a Brokerage Plus related question. And Brian, um, I'd always recommend, uh, recommend using the beta version. And we've got a new feature that's only available in the beta version, and we'll get to that in just one second here. Um, let's see, da, da, da. one more to talk about here. Just keeping an eye on the time here. All right, we're right on schedule. This one, Lumber Liquidators, which was a short. We can see right here, conservative profit, a whopping 49.86, but if we were patient, and held it a little bit longer, not quite a triple value, but almost, you know, 50 bucks and 150, not quite triple what conservative profit is showing. Um, but a really good entry right here at 930 on a short sell from Holly. And unlike the other ones that kind of went sideways for a little bit, this is one of those that just kind of went boom, 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 down, down, down in the next 30 minutes after the entry signal right here. Um, so 9.30 short call, we initially bottomed out within 30 minutes at 8.58. That's quite a nice percentage move. Um, but then we had a nasty little wick right here, back up through the entry line, okay? So why did Holly close it out? Notice the shaded area right here, all right? You know what? That's going to freak anybody out, whether it's the AI or, <laughs> or any one of us. You know, we're like, yeah, it's trade's working great. 30 minutes passes in these two candles, and then all of a sudden, wham, they jam it all the way up through the entry line and just about ha about a third of the way through the stop. However, what is happening here, okay? Notice how that wick jumps right up to that 10 period, and then boom, it gets smacked right back down. So it didn't stay there for long, but it did go there, all right? So just like we were looking at it the long on the long trades, on the short side, the 10 period can often act as a guiding hand. Now, that is a significant spike. So anybody covering, whether it's the AI or me or you or anybody else, you know, nobody's going to knock you for that. Um, but the bottom line is the 10 period, 10 period did its job here, keeping everything nice and tapped down. Um, so if we were patient and were able to sit that wiggle, we could have enjoyed not quite a three times uh, profit from what you see in conservative mode there. Um, after we got through that little bit of turbulence, <clears throat> thing beheld, uh, behaved quite well and just kind of grinded on down for the rest of the day. So a nice short opportunity, nice spread there. Of course, these not this one not quite as tame as the two long examples that we saw there, um, but a nice move, a nice trade nonetheless to the short side and the lumber liquidators there. Now you can see the conservative uh, exits were right on the money on the duplicate trade that we had here in NVC because it, had we stayed in it, we would have made less money. Now this just happens to coincide also with a target hit. These are, you know, we don't see target hits a lot, 
maybe one or two a session, depending on the day. Uh, but this one worked like a charm. A nice entry up here at 967, and just a nice stair step down in the following hour. So not including the entry bar, one, two, three, four, boom, target hit, and then the stock bouncing right off of that target area and gyrating right back up to the entry signal. So this one, target hit, boom, perfect, conservative mode, one out on these guys. So as you can see here, once we get past these two trades and the lumber liquidator, we don't really see any spread between conservative and uh, conservative and moderate profit. Um, David, hopefully you're the only one experiencing no sound. Uh, if the sound dropped off, you might, well, you're not going to be hearing me anyway. Uh, so let me just type a message to Dave here and then we will proceed. Just got to tell him to try to log off and back on. Sometimes that fixes it. Sometimes it doesn't. Sorry about that, David. All right, a little time check here. We're doing okay. All right, so once again, all in all, the AI performed relatively well in the face of a down market today. So we'll get to the new feature that's in the beta here uh, in just a short minute here. I did want to talk about one of my favorite windows, which is my turbo down no resistance window. That is this window right here. All right, and I've got a couple of different versions of these windows. I've got the regular turbo brakes up and down right here. And then I've got the modified versions, which are turbo up, no support, turbo up, no resistance. Um, what does no support mean? Well, when we look at the things that are coming through, I just clicked on CRTO, and this daily is pretty compressed up here. Even if I went further back, what you're gonna notice is these things are at all time lows. In other words, the basic version is looking for stocks hitting daily lows with accelerated one minute volume. And I also like to see some high relative volume in there too, because if I spot a nice range break on the intraday, you know, and I just pulled this one up at random, CR, or, uh, yeah, CRTO. Okay, uh, notice what we have going on here on the intraday. We put in a high up here. We put in the initial low on the open, then we put in a high up here, then we go range bound for a little bit. Slowly but surely the stock makes its way back down and it breaks that opening range. And we can see what happens if we were to have gone short here for the rest of the day. Notice the 10 period in play here as well, okay? Um, but a nice down move nonetheless. But anytime we're in a short or a long and we're trying to figure out, well, how much room might I have in this thing? Because I don't want to get out too early, but I'd like to kind of know, you know, where it might run into some support on the short side or where it might bump its head on some resistance uh, on the long side. And the added benefit of this version over here is that when we look to the left to try to figure out where it might find some support, there is none, because in addition to this nice little pattern that we're seeing unfold on the intraday, we're at all-time lows. So there's nothing here that could act as support, which is a, not a guarantee that the thing's just going to tube all day, but it's a very nice attribute to have in a short trade where you got in on a nice cozy intraday pattern with minimal risk. And by the way, if I shorted this guy right here, right about the 1280 level, what would I use as a stop loss? My general rule of thumb, not including the entry bar, is the previous 15 minute high, which is the top of this prior candle right here, since we're looking at 15 minute candles. So you got a nice small risk area in case it didn't work. And then at the lows today, we had a much larger reward area, okay? You could fit that risk area many times into this reward area, and that's that's the type of game we're playing here. We'd like to try to make multiples of risk, which is R, and in this case, this is a perfect example. So keep that in mind. This window has been pretty dormant since we've been in, uh, you know, in an uptrend in the market, uh, but it's starting to spit out lots of things uh, today. And since we are kind of still smack dab in the middle of earnings season. 
Um, I want to point out an interesting play that came across here. Not today, of course, it's showing up hitting all-time lows again today. Um, but Viacom, where did my single stock window go there? Okay, so I just clicked on Viacom. And notice that we reported uh, earnings right here on the 20th, okay? Now, this is the 20th right here. This is the 20th of this bar right here. Let me just circle it. That's the 20th right here, this big red bar. Now, notice what Viacom had been doing. You know, we didn't really get the opportunity to, you know, to play it right here. We gapped to all-time lows, and then it's just been going down for uh, <clears throat> the day of earnings and uh, Friday and today as well. All right. But sometimes stocks have, or sometimes companies have two classes of stock. All right. So the interesting thing here on the main Viacom is that we gap down to these areas right here and just started going. So, you know, there was never any, any type of pattern to key off of as far as the daily goes, but there is also Viacom C. Okay. So let me go back to Viacom regular here. We opened up below this area, but look what Viacom A did, V-I-A-C. We opened up above this area and had plenty of time to go, hmm, the parent stock opened below, but this one did not. It opened up in, in this range here. So a lot of the times, that, well, I can't say a lot. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes it does not. But just keep in mind, if you see, you know, if you see a stock like this, especially in earnings season, and the only way I knew that VIACA was doing it <clears throat> was because it was coming through the same ticker here as soon as this area right here was breached. And then we had time to play this break here and enjoy the downturn. Okay, because this is the 20th here on VIACA. This was the 20th here on the parent company. So just keep that in mind. You might see some more of these pushing through earnings season, but sometimes there's a laggard. And in this case, uh, VIACA, it just lagged, and you had plenty of time to key off of the key, key off of the the parent stock, VIAC, um, and that was a little gift. Happens from time to time, so just be aware of that. Um, but the bottom line is, when you see these things coming through, if the risk looks good on the intraday then you've got another added benefit of the thing being at all time lows. Love sack. Yeah, they make couches, right? You've probably seen the commercial over and over again. Well, check it out. Look at this intraday range breakdown right here. And of course, I'm using candle bodies. Of course, it's, uh, it's up to you. If you're a purist, you know, you have to use wicks. <clears throat> you're taking a little bit more risk because you're not using a true low. That'd be the true low. But once again, the candle bodies are where the majority of the volume is being done. So once again, you see this setting up on Love Sack. Boom, that little intraday range is broken. You've got some nice downward momentum that you could have taken advantage of. Now, what's going to happen tomorrow? Is it going to pop back above here? Maybe, maybe not. But we get the question all the time, you know, can trade ideas be used for swing trading? Well, we always like to say every trade starts out as a day trade. And, you know, if you like what's going on on the daily, and typically we like to be up a little bit going into the close and not just hoping, you know, for an overnight gap in our direction. But if you're up in a position going into the close and then you've got affirmation on the daily, well, yeah, that becomes a swing candidate. You know, matter of fact, it'll be interesting to see what love does tomorrow because once these levels are broken, Typically, you know, gravity is going to take its course here, figuratively speaking. Um, but the risk is low, right? You can use this area of potential uh, resistance as your stop loss as well. They don't always line up this pretty, but hopefully you get the gist of it. All right, got a question coming in here. How to see the turbo windows? Actually, Sky, if I grab my channel bar here, and I cruise all the way down to the bottom. If you click on channel four, you're gonna find all of the Turbo family windows. And you're gonna see a lot of windows in channel four. 
And those are all of my favorite windows, Andy's, Steve's, and Sean's. Those are all of our favorite windows. So you can find all the Turbo family in channel four, and you can just right click in the windows that you wanna keep and save them to your cloud. No problemo. All right, so these are, are coming to life. A lot more symbols starting to come through here. Of course, if we put in a bounce tomorrow on the SPY and start to head back up, these may dry up and these may pick up, um, but these are the exact opposite plays. These guys are gonna be stocks that are hitting all-time highs, seeing something good on the day, on the intraday that you see, then there's nothing for them to bump their heads into. There's no apparent resistance, okay? But of course, keep in mind all, you know, you know, in relation to what the market is giving out that day. Definitely a lot more short opportunities for turbo down family no support than there were long opportunities from any of the turbo up families, whether it's the no resistance or the regular version. All right, I know I'm jabbering a lot here and I wanna make sure we squeeze this in here. Okay, so let's talk about the new feature and the beta version and how you can get the beta version, but we've got a new feature in here which allows you to execute right off of our charts. So let me just expand this intraday out a little bit here. And if you download the beta, and I'll show you how to get there. Okay, so if you cruise over to our website, let me just back it up here. So if you click on the download button, at first you're gonna be directed to the production version, but what you wanna do is just scroll down a little bit, then you have the option to download the beta version. So that's what you wanna do. And when you download the beta version, in your charts, you're going to have these buy and sell buttons, okay? So this will allow you to just set your buy and sell orders and your stop losses right off of the chart. However, one little caveat to discuss before you can do that. So Brokerage Plus, you have to have a strategy that's assigned to the default chart, okay? So there's a lot of confusion sometimes between a strategy and what we might just call a script, okay? So even though this is considered a strategy, it's really just the instructions that I wanna give the system on how to open a position. So if we wanna see what's in here, we just right click and we say edit trading strategy. You can see I've titled this one chart default long, okay? It's for going long off the chart. Entry time, I just leave them wide open because this is a manual execution. So it's whatever time of the day I see a good trade. So I'm just leaving these uh, wide open, start at 8.30, go all the way to five minutes to the close, which is the max, or three o'clock. Actually, it lets me push it all the way out. And then order details. How do we want to position our, our, or you know, how do we want to size our trades? We can do fixed dollars, fixed shares, or we can say a risk value, which is what I'm doing here. I'm saying, I want to risk 100 bucks and let it size me in accordingly as to the shares time and force, how many seconds we want our order to stay out. I've just got mine out for five minutes, which is uh, actually it's 10 minutes, 10 times 60, 600 seconds, uh, 10 minutes. And I've got an aggressive limit delta, which means it's gonna put my price in seven cents above the signal price in this case, which since this is manual, I'll show you here in a minute, you can adjust it. And then we've got a risk management, a stop loss of 2%. But the bottom line is when I right click here, I've assigned it as my default long chart setup. So during the market hours, if I'm clicking on something and I see something that's interesting, say I wanna buy TBTY, if it punches through this high here, all I have to do is hit the B button, take my bar and get it right above that line and hit the button. As soon as TVTY goes through that blue line, it'll execute a buy for me. And you can see here, it automatically put my stop loss, um, which is represented by the red line. <clears throat> now at any, type of the, uh, any time of the day, once this position has been initiated, let's say I wanna adjust my stop, 
I can just grab this and adjust it. It will automatically redo everything. Um, and that's really cool because no longer do we have to go in here, find our order, cancel it, re-input a different price. You can just grab this and set your stop anywhere you want, right? So that's what we have going on in the new beta version, the ability to execute right off of the charts, which is a really cool functionality. And then once we have our buys and stop losses in play, we don't necessarily have to go back in here, find the orders, cancel them, do all that stuff. We just grab it and drag it. Makes our life a lot easier. All right, just enough time to get to the last topic here, which is a simple method for creating tomorrow's watch list. So kind of circling back around to what I was talking about earlier, if a stock was strong today, well then you might wanna keep your eyes on it for tomorrow because if something was strong and finished net positive today, well, then there's a good chance it's just strong, it's under accumulation, could be, uh, institutions buying it but for whatever reason there are buyers in it and then it's even more of an anomaly considering the market action that we had which was not red but crimson in color so what I've done here and you can do this with any top list this just happens to be one of my favorite top lists also here's another top list that was created by Steve Gomez called the a table which is looking at stocks that uh, have strong chart patterns based off of our proprietary scoring system, which is the metric that you see right here. And the 90s are the good stuff, even the high 80s, kind of like an A and B uh, in, in school days. So what I did here is I just simply took this top list and I sorted it by change from close. Okay, so we can see right here even though ADSW is only up one-tenth of one percent, it's still strong. Don't necessarily like the chart there, but when we look at TDOC, RUN, VCEL, STAR, and ZM, they're all up considerably today, especially in a down market, right? And of course, some of these will be stocks that run inverse to the market, but at first glance here, I don't necessarily notice that any of those stocks fall into that category. Um, they're all up nicely today. So just from this one top list, I've got one, two, three, four, five candidates, okay? So it's really easy just to highlight this row by dragging your mouse with the left uh, button clicked. Once you highlight those symbols, all you have to do is hit Control C on your keyboard. Go ahead and start creating a new symbol list here. Call it whatever you want. Tomorrow's watch list. Then I just click on it, hit edit, hit the old control V. Now I've patched those stocks in there. Now I've got one of my favorite top lists over here. This has the added benefit of stocks that are doing really high relative volume. So check out all these guys. And on this one, I actually went in and set change from close has to be a minimum of 1%. So all these guys have to be up a minimum of 1%. We can see way down here at the bottom, 1.1% for MOS. Some of these guys are up huge today, all right? Of course, once again, there's TVIX, you know, uh, some of the ETFs or whatever. You can weed those out. But if I wanted to grab this whole row of stocks here to use as my watch list tomorrow, same thing. Just hit Control C, come back over here, hit Edit come to the end of the list, hit control V, then go back in, weed out the ETFs that run counter to the market or maybe any oil stocks since they seem to be doing that today too, um, running counter to the direction of the market. So that all you're left with are equities that typically don't run counter to the market that were up significantly today because if they weren't strong at today's market, they might be strong again tomorrow. Now some of the other ones that have been running counter some of these gold stocks, right? So gold, oil and gas, minerals, things of that nature, um, those are the ones that can run counter to the market. Uh, and then it's just a process of going through there and weeding those out. But you're still gonna be left with a nice little handful because you know even if we weeded out 10% of what we just put in there, 
we got 54 stocks in there. Even if you weed out 10 or 20, you're still going to have a nice watch list of just straight up equities that were, for some reason, going up strong today, posting good gains from yesterday's close or Friday's close um, with decent volume. So that's a simple yet very effective and powerful way to generate a watch list for tomorrow. All right, and we are just about at the top of the hour. And Scott, I see your question there about how to get to the volume radar. So now's a good time just to kind of click over to channel four. Now you're gonna notice here are the Turbo Up family. And I do believe Steve's A table is in there. And if it's not, I will take a moment here to drop it in the chat area. Okay, yep, so Steve must have come out with A table. Uh, after we did channel four. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a table into the chat area and you can grab the cloud link there. But the Turbo family is in in channel four. And Scott, I do believe we are ready for you to walk us out if you're ready. All right, Jamie, thanks. Yeah, a couple items on the way out. Uh, we've got that new daily support session, so bookmark it. It's tradeideas.com slash live. Uh, Tate is a shortcut that takes you right to the YouTube page that you can just bookmark, and it's daily, 12 Eastern, 9 Pacific. Uh, it's been very popular. It's a replacement for our previous Trade Ideas University classes, which are still available as an archive. You can find those on our website. Um, we've got a new ebook out by our, CT, our CIO, um, Dave Mabe, and he shares some ideas and concepts about how to manage earnings season and make it work to your advantage. Uh, so do check that out. It's a free book. Trade-ideas.com slash earnings is the URL to go to to get it. Just put in your email address and you can download it uh, from your email once you get that uh, confirmation. We've got a podcast. We uh, released um, one about our new um our new daily support session on Friday. So you can search for Trade Ideas Podcast and add us as a subscription. Then you can check out that pod and our previous back issues. And then you're ready to catch the next one when it's released. Uh, there's a code this month. You can use either to purchase or upgrade. Kickoff is all caps, 15% off first month or year of Trade Ideas. So if you decide you want to upgrade, go for it. Uh, you can find Jamie on Twitter at QuantBot. Uh, yeah, we also have Steve Gomez at Today Trader, and we have Trade Ideas as well. Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook handle to follow and share stuff with your friends. And any questions at all should always go to info at trade-ideas.com. Uh, that goes into our help desk software so it doesn't get lost and it gets routed to the appropriate team member to get you your answer. Um, so we're going to have this recording up later on tonight or tomorrow. You get an email reminder tomorrow uh, with a link to the playlist so you can catch anything you missed. Share it with your friends. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Hey, thank you, Scott. Thanks, everybody, for popping in, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.